Welcome, welcome. Episode 17, Word to Your Mama. First full-blown episode of 2021. That is correct. If you're new here, welcome. And the premise basically is me, a Latina mama, uh, a.k.a. magical motherfucking warrior, navigating business and building my tribe. So basically, I have people on here that are part of my tribe because maybe I've known them and I I know them really well and I respect them. Or maybe I don't know them that well, but their podcast, their book, their conference or something like that has impacted my life. And so I consider that part of my tribe because everything that negative and positive that you consume or that you run into, you know affects you, impacts you. So that's the premise of this show. I have some amazing people from all walks of life. So for 2021, I wanted to start off with a bang. And so we're starting off with one of my brother-in-laws who just got out of prison about a little over a month ago. He was in for 12 years. His name is Jam Young Taylor. We call him Bib. Supernatural Bear calls him Uncle Big J. You'll find out why. And he's also known as Okie Dog. (laughs) And we'll discuss many, many different things. We'll discuss what he's learned, how it's impacted him. He was also a firefighter in while he was in there. He got many like mad degrees. Also, the amazing story how he reconnected with his daughter by creating these awesome kids books. And they were on the news and a bunch of different things like that. And then after that, which we go a little longer than usual, but there was so much to talk about. And it's just so awesome, you know, that he's out and the experiences we had. And then the Supernatural Bear Corner is special because it's the first time he gets to interview someone. He was super hyped. And he gets to interview his Uncle Big J, who his middle name, he's named after. So that's exciting. Welcome and enjoy. Good practice. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just a combo. Just a combo. Just, just a combo. Just you with your hermana. Um, si. Probably one of your, uh, I'm thinking, I'm hoping one of your favorite um, s- sister-in-laws. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> oh, baby, babe. Hey. Okay, babe. So let, I wanted to, I was making the outline for having, I'm so excited to have you on. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad um, to be- and then I wanted to, I was like, how do, where should we start? Let's start from the beginning. Like I call you Bib, but what is your name? And what do you go by? What do you do when people say, oh, what do you do? So just so people can know what your name is. All right. Um, my name is Jamian Taylor. There's a time I never would have said that because <laughs> that's considered my government name. And we don't we we don't do that. But I've been going by it for the last 12 years while I was in the sense I just got used to it. So yeah. I'm cool. And now, you know, I, I'm trying to do everything official. So that's what's, what's gonna be on everything legit. So it's John Young Taylor, the family calls me Bibby, the the uh friends call me Jay. Um Jaya is, is, you know, you know, we have a bunch of names. So. Yeah. And if, yeah. if today, if someone you've never met before and they're like, oh, what do you do? What, what is your answer to that uh, today? Today, uh, I'm an author. That's right. Oh, please believe it. And we will be getting into that shit. Awesome. Um, what you so you're, you're you go by Jay and. We well, I want people to and I want people to know J A E, and I want people to know that the supernatural bear. You listen to this podcast, you know the supernatural bear. We name his middle name is named after you, and so you're to him your uncle Big J. Yep, yep. And he's Little J. Little bit, little Big J. (laughs) Little Big J. Yes, don't let me mess it up because he will be upset. Little little Big J. Um, and so I met you. I think I think I might have met you before this, but maybe you you tell me how you remember. But I think the first time I met you is when move, the move. Yeah, right. That's the first time, right? I was like, did I meet him before that? So I was moving. I was living by myself in K Town in a studio mm-hmm. in like Slumlord Studio, 
cockroach infested. And then um, I was moving to Silver Lake and then uh, Rocco was like, he's like, I got, I'm bring some people. And he brought you like, just re- did he tell you? He was like, oh, I need, well, how did that go down? Um, if memory serves me correct, he was just like, I, I, I need, I need you to help me move. You got anybody that, you know, that could help move. So, you know, family calls, I, I go. So I just called, I called one of my boys and we just went over there and went to task. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Rock gave that much detail. <laughs> Cause he never does anyways. <laughs> exactly. So it was, it was just, I need you to help move. All right. Where do we show up? And let's do it. Yeah. And you came through, you, you and your friend came through. I don't remember your friend. I just remember yeah. you. And big, then six, six foot six, big dude. Yeah. And then, so that was like a blessing because I was stressed. And I think it was raining a little bit or sprinkling oh. or something a little bit, if I remember correctly. And then I got to meet your now wife, Lupita, mm-hmm. because as a thank you, I took you. We all went out like double date style to mm-hmm. House of Blues. Right, right. R.I.P. because that shit ain't there anymore. Um, is that crazy? And it's uh, crazy. <laughs> and we went there to eat, and then so I, you know, I got to I got to know you there, and I remember thinking like, man, he's funny. He's like yeah. super funny. Like he's never serious. He's super funny. Um, <laughs> so yes, I want to talk about uh, how we met and stuff, and then yeah. So and then like I would kind of see you here and there it was like the beginning of my relationship with Raka. So mm-hmm. it was kind of like you know he kind of kept shit separate. So <laughs> you know how he, he was back then. So yeah. I didn't see you as much here and there. I think maybe the last time I saw you was at the DVD release party for Dilated. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. remember that? Yep. Yeah, because I was there with, with my my homegirl, Karen, and she was with me. I remember I remember I was asking her, I was like, can you roll with me? I don't want to come by myself. And so she rolled with me, and then you were there. trouble after that one, too. <laughs> Every concert, almost every concert, almost every everything dilated related, I would get a phone call the next day. Everyone, Rock would call me up the next day. Bib, Bib, you was tripping. Bib, why are people telling me this? Bib, what is going on? Dude, you can't do that. This is my business. Every time. <laughs> Shout out, Rock. Sorry. <laughs> big bro, big bro. Um, people see. <laughs> I was really excited to, to, it was really important for me to have you on this platform and this podcast because I miss you. Um, also, you know, I miss you because you were gone for 12 years and yep. I wanted to talk about where you're at now with that. Like, I don't need a, you know, how it was maybe a couple of things, how things were while you were there, but, you know, I really want to focus on your history maybe a little bit, and then, um, talk about your, a little bit of your experience. There's some things that I really want to touch upon is kind of like you being a firefighter there Mm -hmm. and things like that. And we'll get it to that. So, so you just got out. Right. December 2nd. December 2nd, so 2020, it's... About a month and a half, less yeah. than a month and a half ago. So, so how does that fucking feel? Uh, you know, I guess you can compare it to like if uh, if there was a beached whale or something that's just <laughs> drying up, laying up on the sand, and then all of a sudden, after just baking in the sand and out of its environment, it gets put back in the water. You know what I mean? That's I guess that's what I could relate it to. It feels awesome. You know, it feels like... Uh, a, the end of slavery or you know what I mean like yeah, that type of feeling like yeah that type I bet of major feeling. Like you tell a slave all of a sudden okay you're free and is it a, a, probably a fucking crazy unique experience because you're free but COVID COVID you're not really free because even the people that are free aren't really free yeah it's almost like every they didn't they didn't let me out they just uh, they just put everybody in jail too <laughs> <laughs> we're laughing but it's kind of fucked up it's, but yeah. it's real so but all right if everybody's in jail with me all my loved ones and everything then at least it <laughs> makes it a little bit better not you know in a manner of speaking but like, i got my family back so i got my daughter back you know got uh you know freedom i got the yeah. beach back uh, all that so yeah it's amazing must be amazing um so when you were in 
prior to, to, to going in this, this last time, like what did you, did you even, was it even anywhere in your mind, the, the concept of the school to prison pipeline? Or was that even something you, you knew beforehand? And while you were in there, were you thinking about that at all? Um, I thought about, I think I just generally thought about everything, um, is more, con- yeah, definitely in a way that laws aren't made for us and yeah. we don't learn them law. We don't learn the laws and they're basically used to used against us. They're like laws are like a weapon for blacks and minorities. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So they just basically outsmarted us, out manipulated us, put themselves in better positions to make the laws that work against us. You know what I mean? So, but I knew that going in, I knew yeah. that. And so it's, you know, in, in a way, it's my fault for not knowing the laws and to what extent that they could push the laws. You know what I mean? So while I'm in there, I kick myself for saying, for for getting caught up in the net. If I knew the net was there, then, you know, although it shouldn't be there, I knew it was I knew there was a net there and I, I let myself get caught up in the net. Yeah. So now all we could do is try and cut holes in the net and, and remove the nets so it doesn't happen to other people. You know, because it's just not fair. Yeah, because it's big business. And I think there's a lot of people that don't can't see it that way. Even even some black and brown folks that they don't they don't see it, that it's really set up against us. And the school to prison pipeline is real um, Mm. because it's just another form of slavery. Is that exactly what I was going to say? It's modern day slavery. And I saw you see that everywhere in there. Like you're getting paid from, you know, generally about starting off at eight cents. An hour, you know, some people like it's a big deal if you get a job paying over a hundred dollars a month, and it's and it's rare. Yeah. But if you generally, you know, your jobs are going to be like between eight, eighteen cent. As a as a firefighter, there I was getting thirty two cent an hour. Shut up. And that's to go save lives to and put uh, your life at risk. Put my life at risk to save lives. We did a whole bunch of medical. We went out to the communities. Uh, to the local community and, and saved people, saved lives out there, um, CPR, all of that. And we're getting paid 32 cents an hour to do that. Maybe at the top guy there was getting like 43 cents an hour. So, That's crazy. Yeah, and they, I, I don't know how their, their, their budgets work, but, you know, it's, it's big. Like through PIA, it's just big corporations coming in and contracting basically slave yeah. labor. You know, so why, what's their incentive to stop doing that? Yeah, like they're just like let's get more, more, more in quote unquote employees. Right. Let's we we run the prisons for them. We <clears throat> you know they give us jobs that run the prison and pay us nothing. So that's less real you know real jobs that they have to uh, pay for. Um, and then they contract us out for to private contractors for for big business. So you know until until people just stop. You know, basically, like in school days when they just people when you was running around saying "wake up," <laughs> yeah. tell people just stop, and shut it all down, stop working for them. It might be tough at first, but ultimately, that's what's going to have to happen. You just have to stop running their prisons, make it expensive to house us. Yeah, because yeah. you're in there, then they get cheap, super cheap labor, and then on top of that, they get a certain amount of money to give you the wackiest, unhealthiest food. And then the people, you have to pay money extra to get even extra types of food. So they're making money on that. Oh, it's, it's such big business. They're getting per inmate approximately $80,000 a year to houses when it might be a three, four, five family household in the hood that, you know, is not living off of 40000 Exactly. But you're getting 80000 to house one inmate. You're not giving them good education. You're not giving them good food. You're not you're not filling them. They're not getting full off the food that you're feeding them. They're you're wearing the same clothes just about every day. And yeah. anything other than that, they're paying for themselves. So where is that eighty thousand dollars going? It's not going to rehabilitation. No. It's you know, where is it going? And so you being in the system, you for sure, but we know some of us know looking in that the really rehabilitation doesn't happen. But you being there, did you see any evidence of anyone being rehabilitated, or was it just a vicious cycle and it was on the individual 
to make different moves so that they don't come back in? You know what? I'm not going to lie. I've seen it. There, there, there are instances as far and in between. You Generally, you have to rehabilitate yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. You have to um, you have to want it. And there are things that are in place that if you really want it, you can get it. I wouldn't say the, it's the prison rehabilitating you, but they do give you there are some programs that that do help. It's just the uh, bureaucracy and mm-hmm. the. Um, the, everything that you have to go through to get in the programs. Yeah. Like they, they, they are offering, if you're one of the lucky 30 people that make it, That's but what, what about, say. you know what I mean? If you're, if you're lucky, the, in the lucky, you know, on the lucky yard, if you're on the good yard that has that program, um, and then you could finish the program without getting transferred, mm. you know, or cause they don't, they don't really care. Or you could finish the program without it going on a lockdown constantly and, and, and getting mm. shut down. Or finish the program without going to the hole for something that wasn't your fault or for yeah. doing something that you had to do to, you know, Survive. protect yourself. Yeah. Exactly. So it's it's so many things stacked against you. They have programs there, but it's it's so much stacked against you. You're lucky if you're able to finish everything. And some people do. And, and, and uh, shout out to those people that that actually do do something and make it out. Um, but those are generally people that had it in them to do it from the beginning. And yeah. they want it and they really wanted it. So I was going to ask, that's a good segue. I wanted to ask, how hard was it for you to get into the firefighter program? Um, it was pretty, it was pretty, it's a, it's a difficult process Mm -hmm. for me. It wasn't as hard as it was for some people because, um, just my background is more, uh, was more geared to, paperwork and 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 being able to know who to talk to and how to talk to them yeah so in a in a in a for a position like that they want people that are well groomed they want people that know how to because we have to go to the community Mm -hmm. so they want people that know how to conduct themselves they want to be able to look at your your prison record and see that you know how to behave or that you're not a you're not a problem or you're not going to be a consistent problem so my background helped me to facilitate that quicker than maybe the regular person that might've been waiting years. All mm-hmm. I had to do was wait for my points and my time to get down low enough in order to be a part of the program. But then after that, it was, uh, you know, applicate a couple of applications, constant kind of bugging them. Yeah. Hey, you know, can you look at my file? Hey, um, can I, you know, and then I had to, they had me P coded for violence because of my charges. Um, so I had to wait for, I had to go through the process of getting that removed which was, you know, just a, a, a whole ridiculous process by that, you know, by that time. So, you know, it could have been more difficult for me. It's difficult for a lot of people. Yeah. But um, I was able to manage. Because you're, you're, before going in, you, I was thinking about just our whole history before. It's just like, you're just always out of the box thinker, like as far as like right. business and you're, you know, always like, always science and mathematicing the way out, like different ways in and out. Right. Cause like you had, right. I remember you had the hip hop driving school, the hip hop traffic school, yeah, <laughs> yeah traffic original school. Hip-hop traffic school. <laughs> <laughs> like just like thinking like that. So you're always like peeping the scene. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. See what, what you have, what you need. And so when you're like, Saying you got in, that was like, of course. <laughs> yeah, I had to send a letter. How, how many black people do you have over in your firehouse right now? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, you have to be creative. You have to, you know. So you got to appeal to what they need, you know, the, the voice that they need to feel and put it on, you know, put you on, put yourself on their radar. Yeah, so smart, man. So smart. Always and forever. Um, so I wanted to ask. I remember when I when you were transitioning out and you weren't fully out yet, but I saw that we had all those crazy fires on top of a pandemic, right? And then they mm-hmm. were utilizing some of the I don't know if they did yours, your old crew at, at at that facility, but they were utilizing a lot of prison firefighters to mm-hmm. risk their lives to go in those and to help out because they needed all hands on deck. And I don't know if it went through, but it said like they were going to try to make it so that those on the firefighter, prison firefighter teams 
Get their records expunged. Get their records expunged. And Mm -hmm. I was asking you what you thought of that, and you're like, I don't think it would be for your crew, but I don't know what happened with that and what you thought of that. Uh, That pass, it's it's because they basically another way for them to, because it benefits them, Mm -hmm. it benefits the the state and the fire department. um, They want to expunge, if you were on a, a hand crew, those are the people that go out there and cut the fire lines mm. and things like that. I was in the firehouse. Uh, so the hand crew is all, that's basically all they do is they go out there and uh, pretty much cut fire lines and things like that. I was in a firehouse. So I was actually a firefighter where we did more structure fires. We did institutional fires. We did, we hazmat and wow. a lot of, a lot of medical. So because that's not, um, paid for by the by uh cal fire Mm -hmm. because that's because the firehouses are actually part of the uh state like the the prison yeah then it didn't apply for us we didn't have an outside agency fighting for for them they didn't you know i was already gone by this time but they didn't have an outside agency fighting for them lobbying for them Uh, saying hey we need them um that's why even cal fire they got raises they were making a lot better money than inmates at any of the, the, uh, CDCR firehouses, mm. you know, even though we go out and save lives every day, you know what I mean? Yeah. They cut fire lines, which is also very important, but we're getting paid by this, by, by basically the institution yeah. where they're getting paid by an outside private business, private company. Got it. So yeah, that's crazy. It. Mm-hmm. But you like, it's crazy the 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 training that you received. Ah uh, yes, it's it's, it's ridiculous. Like, we, invaluable, like you know, like it, you'll have that forever. And so, one thing I wanted to mention, I'll have it in in the show notes, is that you know, if people are like, "What are you talking about the pr- school to uh, prison pipeline?" and "What are you talking about?" It's just another form of slavery. If you if you're asking those types of questions, I believe you should definitely watch Thirteenth by Ava DuVernay. It's on Netflix. It's an eye opener for so many people when it came out. I think it came out a couple years ago. And she basically is a documentary, gorgeous visually, um, with stats in the history of slavery to now and how it's big mm. business and how how uh, it's 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 basically built against to you know black and brown uh mm-hmm. and marginalized communities indigenous communities um so definitely we'll have it in the show notes um one thing that <laughs> I, I i wanted i think i was trying to talk to you when i saw you um but i think the supernatural bear was around but i just it just boggles my mind because your nephew is so fucking smart. You know this. He's been <laughs> here before. He He's not new to this world. He's been here many times before. He's so intelligent. And when we go visit you, we went to visit. You were at two different facilities. We went to, to the two different facilities. But mm-hmm. he, was a, he was really young at the first one. But he was old enough to, and he would ask all kinds of questions, figure all kinds of things out. And I was like, he's going to figure out. Uh, yeah, what this just place is we were, I was we like, were just he, all just waiting yeah we were just waiting we're like we weren't gonna say anything but we're like let's go you know and he'd ask like little questions like oh you know he at the end I think the last time we went he I think he kind of started noticing he was like why do they all dress we're like oh that's the uniform <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> like but like I was wondering like yeah work camp <laughs> yeah work camp so we we're telling him that and you were saying that to him and stuff and Cause he knows p- police officers and stuff. Like he, I, he never asked like why there were police officers and why we had to go through bar. Like it, it, it was. I was like, I don't. It's so interesting to me that he never realized. So one thing we'll get into in a little bit is you know the your book that you you're doing with with um your daughter, my niece, and <laughs> I saw the video first and I was like, oh, sh- he's gonna, he's finally gonna understand <laughs> where, where we're going to visit. So in the, I'll have a link to that too. And so when you say, you know, they're like, oh, cause you know, reunited with his daughter. Cause you know, he was 12 years in prison. He was like, yeah. uh, he said, prison. what? He was watching. He was like, what? <laughs> Don't they mean work camp? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He was like, what? And we're telling, he's like, oh, I had no idea. It was crazy um oh yeah he told me he, he he told me that he said hey uh uncle big j can i ask you something i said yeah sure you can ask me anything he was like so i was watching the news when they were talking about 
you and my cousin uh, Jalen writing the books, and it mentioned that you were in prison. Like, um, I thought you were at a work camp. Like, you know, <laughs> what did you do? If you don't mind me asking, what did you do to be in prison? <laughs> Like, crazy. Wow. I know it it's crazy. Great. Like it never hit him. And I was like, we, we told him, we're like, we're like, you, you talk, you have a conversation with your uncle, Big J. You're old enough. You know, that's, this is his business. You talk to him. He's like, okay. Um, but we're, we're like, he's like, I didn't know. I was like, I go, what did you think? I go, you didn't realize. He goes, no. He goes, I thought it was just work, <laughs> just work <laughs> camp and <laughs> da, 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 da. And, and like, he never made the connection either because, uh, crazy respect, I will have mm-hmm. to say this again, crazy respect to your wife, my sister-in-law, Lupita, because... Shout out to Lupita. Because ride or die you. for 12 ride or die. years. Ride or die. Ride or die for 12 years. She was there every weekend, unless it was on lockdown. She was there on the holidays when they do the special things. She would make that drive up. Wherever mm-hmm. you were, she'd make that drive up. She'd spend the night so she could spend as many days as possible. She's the one who told us how to get in, what we needed to dress, da 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 how we applied, how we got the thing. Like, And we would always forget, right? Because we're not going every weekend. So I'll be like, you know, how do, what is it? What can I wear again? da 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 And, you know, what can I take in for a little man and stuff like that? I mean, re- like, respect. Like, th- not everyone gets that. That must have been... How was that for you to have that constant, that stability during this crazy time? Uh, it was a blessing. It, it just felt it. Basically, it was my gr- it was my grounding. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It was. It would would made me know that I'd be able to, you know, do it. Do this. Yeah. Like, in, you know, I knew I could do it. I'd do it whatever I got to do anyway, but yeah. do it easier, do it without, because people don't realize if you don't have that kind of, that kind of support, not just regular family support, but you don't have that, that, that inspirational support from your significant other, it just makes things like, you know, 10 times, a hundred times harder for some people. So to know I had that type of uh, loyalty and also, um, when you, if you ever, when people are in there and they have to question their relationship or they question where this person is going or why don't you come visit me anymore? What are you doing? You're not answering mm. your phone. Mm. That that takes someone's time, like the, the hardness on a scale of one to ten of their time from a from a three to a ten real quick. Oh, I bet. And that's going to cause other pro- them to get into other problems. And you know what I mean? Yeah. So so something like something like that and not or or. Uh, you know, it just makes it would make things a lot, lot more difficult. So you know, she's definitely queen for that. And, uh, you know, it was, it was never a time she didn't want to visit. It was never a time she didn't visit if it was at all possible. Yeah. Uh, always answered every call, you know, uh, made sure I, I needed for nothing. Like, you know, yeah. she, she was great. And that's rare. That's that's really rare. And a lot of times you could kind of tell the inmates that have somebody that's that's holding them down like that yeah and the ones that don't right you know what i mean yeah. you could kind of feel that energy or the ones that can't right because or the ones that can't you know what i'm saying because maybe they want to but the thing that a lot of people don't understand is like when you it go costs. in it costs and when you go in it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna go to the closest facility closest prison right. by where you live where you came from people don't understand that like they're gonna put you wherever there's room whatever however they want to so mm-hmm. you know it, Lupita, hardship letters yeah <laughs> you, you gotta you, you gotta work the system just like the system's working you you have to <laughs> you have to learn and that's why i said like when you not scared of, of, of paperwork yeah or, or having your family make phone calls and things like that then um you can't have the attitude a lot of inmates you know they get the attitude um, I used to try and help them with letters or giving them direction too on well, wherever they send me, they send me because you don't want to get your, one thing you don't want to do is get your hopes up and they get disappointed because it'll make their time harder. So yeah. they're like, you know, you get a lot of people that is just like, wherever they send me, they send me, whatever it is, that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, I don't care. I don't, I don't want to make myself care because then I could fall. You know what I mean? Yeah. So me, I'm just always overly optimistic anyway. I'm just super optimistic. Yeah, you're so a positive I didn't, guy. 
yeah, I didn't really, you know, I'm always going to shoot for the for the best scenario, and I'm yeah. I'm gonna go all out to try to to try and get myself in that best scenario. So, you know, um, I was fortunate, I was blessed. I, I put in hardship letters. I, um, you know, tried to stay as close as possible. You know, they tried to send me out of state. Okay, you know, for uh, I gotta I gotta figure out what are the ways to stay in state. We'll yeah. make it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I got, I got to go there. I got to figure out, okay, well, you know, they can't, they can't, I don't want to say too much, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. You, but, but like not everyone has that. And that's some that's a life skill. That's like something that you would be doing in any situation, whether it was any a situation, situation you're in, that's, that's you. And I think that's something that like. I have in common with your big brother. I have in common with you, with a lot of people in my life. It's like, it didn't ma- It wouldn't matter. I said this in one of the relatives, I think the last relatives episode. It's like, it didn't, we all come from fucked up backgrounds, right? Right. And, and, and trauma, generational trauma and all kinds of shit. But I feel like we have that spirit. Maybe we've been here before, like the, you know, supernatural bear, like we've been here before or something. But I feel like you, your brother, me, and a lot of people I know that, you put us, we would have been born in any family. We would have had that figured outness. No matter what. <laughs> like, no matter what. what with, with or without education. Like, yeah, it's you, just in us to, like. To figure it out. What? Okay. And see, okay. we see it. We see the big picture. We, we're mm-hmm. not, it's like we're on that other side of the matrix. Like, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, we see the real shit. And it's just like, when, how do we figure it out? Let me do the research, you know? We're not gonna we're not gonna stand at the front door and just keep banging on the locked door. We're gonna step back and just look at the whole house and it's uh, does that look like a window upstairs open on the second floor? <laughs> and okay, how do we go? You know what I mean? How do we get to that? Yeah. We're gonna yeah. you know, and that's man, it's, it's it's a great trait. Yeah, we definitely all have it. Yeah, and I see I feel like, you know, you're very fortunate that you you were naturally born with that and then there's a lot of people that maybe have it in them, but for whatever reason, their state of mind, I'm sure going in there and also not having the support and going back to, you know, people getting sent out of state, be people getting sent like upstate, you know, no, uh, in the no, to the north or whatever. Um, it's, it's also financial, too. It, it costs to, to they, they put people so far. So, you know, you got to be able to drive up there if it's a four hour drive and you can't, you know, or five hour that's drive. That's what I'm saying. Now you got to go out there. You might have to get a room, you know, so then that's they all the hotels around prisons generally cost more because the they know they're making they, that money. Ugh. So so you got it. And then if you have kids like it, it's a huge financial burden. So it's a lot of it's a lot of family that that would that want to be able to visit their loved ones. But and they, they can't. just can't. Yeah. And the prisons prisons need to make it easier, find a way. And what they don't do consciously or, or they don't do as a matter of policy is keep people close to where their where their family is, they don't care. They uh, don't care they, because they know. They, oh, let's make it as hard as possible so that these motherfuckers mm-hmm. come back in because mm-hmm. we can get keep getting this money, getting these contracts and this and that. And I, it's terrible. Um, but you're right about the hotels. I forgot about that because I one time at your old facility, we the supernatural bear and I went solo, solo with, with, and we met up with Lupita and we got mm-hmm. a hotel. And I remember right. I was like, "How much am I paying for this fucking <laughs> hotel right now?" Like. This ain't yeah. five stars. <laughs> like I was like, "What?" I was like, "Well, we'll do it." But mm-hmm. what? And then the that we did it one time. Um, like usually we just do the drive up for the day. It was like four right. hours, right? But we did it, it with the supernatural bear and I. We would be like, "Oh, let's go up one time," and uh, we did it at the the last facility you're at. And still, you know, it was a little nicer because it's a nicer area. But still, I was like, "For a motel six? <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. <laughs> It's crazy, but that's the kind of like their way of saying, well, we don't really want you family of inmates visiting us. But if you are, we're going to get you, you know, we're going to gouge yeah. you. Yeah. So. For sure. Man. Um. So I, let's get into something uh, maybe a little funner, uh, <laughs> a little interesting. A lot of people asked the Okie Dog story. Okie Dog Crips. <laughs> Okie Dog Crips. <laughs> Shout out Merce. <laughs> so we'll Shout have a link Merce. to it in Don't the show in the show notes as well that he made a song about you. How how did you know that this song was coming out about you, or did someone tell you after the fact? How did that work? Actually, um, I talked to uh, Rock. Mm. So um, I, I remember I, I was. Uh, 
I was talking to Rock. I won't go into too many yeah. <laughs> details, but um, yeah, I was talking to Rock, and um, he had told me that Merz had hit him up and said, you know, and let him know, like, hey, uh, you know, because me and Merz go way back. So he had hit him up and said, hey, uh, I have wrote a song about your brother, you know, about uh, Jay, and I just wanted to get, get, you know, your blessing or his blessing on it and, and go forward with it. So, you know, before I, you know, I didn't even hear anything. It's, it's Merce, that's my boy, you know, it's, it's all respect and love. So I was just like, for sure. Yeah. You know, uh, Rock told me the title. I was like, oh, it's a go. Let's you know, <laughs> do it. Do it. You know what I mean? So how much so. of that, there's a video, I have a link. How much of that song is true? Like, did you always win? And that's why you always started shit? <laughs> Do you want to support original content that supports diverse voices? Why not support Word to Your Mama? You're listening to it right now. Become a patron. Head over to patreon.com slash WTYM. There are four patron levels to choose from, including Good Looking Out, I'm Down, Hell Yeah, and Please Believe It. Benefits include patron shoutouts, exclusive patron-only content, and so much more. Head on over to patreon.com slash WTYM to take your support to the next level. Gracias. It's not why I always started, started <laughs> shit, but, I mean, alcohol... <laughs> was the reason I almost always started shit, <laughs> but um, no, it was it was it was fun a lot of times. You know, you drink, you you get into shit. It, mm-hmm. It's you know, it wasn't too much to worry about. Like you know, it was, at the end of the day, we're gonna it's another story to tell, yeah, um, and talk about or people talk about it. Like oh, man, you see, you see what Jay does. Oh, Jay's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, but. Um, unless it was like multiple people, you know, I pretty much always won, but you know, sometimes I just go ham at a club or something and it might be multiple people and, uh, you know, I wouldn't get hurt, but I can't say I won, but <laughs> you know what I mean? But when it's anybody, you know, when it was basically one-on-one or anything like that, then my stats are really good. <laughs> Your stats are really good. My stats, yeah. <laughs> So I saw when you when you got out, you uh, I saw you wearing the shirt. So did you see him or did you just go to get yourself an Okie Dog? So Okie Dog is a place where you can get. Okie Dog's a, yeah, Okie yeah. Dog is a, is, a, is a real restaurant. I grew up on the street um, where Okie on Sycamore, okay, in West LA off Sycamore and Pico. So I grew up, you know, that's one of the one of the uh, streets over here on that side that I grew up on. And basically I was raised I was from the, from for years on Okie Dog. My mom didn't cook, you know. She went down there, started off when we first moved over there, and, and just gave the local. It was just a local burger stand, you know, a ten dollar check, and said, "Hey, can you just hold this check so my kids could come eat when you know if they're starving <laughs> or something?" And at the end of each week, I'll just whatever they ran up on that ten dollar check, I'll pay you in cash, and you just keep holding the check. <laughs> and then that turned into just, you know, being able to like over the years, you know, being able to run up hundred dollar tabs over there just because they knew me. And that was like, you know, my little hangout. And my, that was that was that was me. People say, where are you from? Everybody's a gang, gang bang over there. So they, you know, you know, different hoods, uh, especially during the peace treaty. But even before that, you had, you know, the Mansfields, you had. Uh, schoolyards they used to come hang out over there for their time you had a couple uh, a couple of boys from Broadway yeah yeah just I could just keep naming ones that would be over there Raymond's for sure was over there so it's uh, like that area is it is it kind of like a, a, a set center point or somewhere in between where all the different type of neighborhoods all the different sets is that why so many different people hung out there from no, different you know different sets Nah, it was the chicks that live right upstairs oh. next door to me. They were the center point. That's why all the different sets used to hang up, hang up there. Keep it 100. I like, see. They was, you know, one day they fucking with the, you know, the yard. So if they got over there and was fucking with them first, and that's who would, it'd be 30 schoolyards hanging out in the building, hanging over the fence with their guns out and beanies on. You know what I mean? If the Mansfields got over there and they hanging out with the chicks, then, you know, it's going to be 30 Mansfields over there hanging out. You know what I mean? So, and, and it was, totally different vibe too like it was totally depending on who was there 
But, uh, you know, if you ask me where I'm from, it's, you know, I'm just, I'm just from the street. I'm, I'm from Okie Dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they, they used to think it was funny. But I used to say it with a little conviction. It was, it was like, <laughs> this, little, this, this little young dude is crazy. <laughs> so how know. how old were you when the legend of Okie Dog, you as Okie Dog, uh, started? Like when you started getting crazy and doing all that stuff? Like how old were you? Um... I'll say, I want to say 14, 15, probably like around 15 mm-hmm. when I really started. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I've always been me, but probably like around, I really started like blossoming. Probably like <laughs> <laughs> 15, started really like awesome. hanging out. You know what I mean? Shout out to, shout out to your mom. Shout out to Ani. For Shout out my to my to having the foresight, like listen, let me just give you this check. <laughs> Feed my uh, kids because yeah. I don't cook. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, she <laughs> she always figured out a way. She's you know she's a little mom. She always gonna make sure that <laughs> that we're good, that we could you know that we're taken care of, no matter what the obstacle was. So now just one obstacle. She she there was a problem. She didn't really cook. We didn't sometimes have money to you know for the food. So all right, I have it by Friday. You know what I mean? So I just yeah. let them eat now. So, so okie dog. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, and then um basically as far as you know, like things aren't really legendary till they tell us till people tell the stories back. So it was just me just doing me and just hanging out and I'll, you know, be out there. You know, I really didn't really care about too much what people thought. So and then I like doing things I, I just like I like attention. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes I'd be I gotta one up myself, like uh, you know. <laughs> You're your own competition. I'm my own competition. I used, that's how I used to look at things. So, and especially when I get faded, like a lot of people, you know, when they get faded, they just go on even, even go on even more. Yeah. So, and then just the stories will build up. And then that's why eventually it's like, this dude, this dude, when you really think about everything, this dude is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this dude is ridiculous. Look at yeah. So, like, I, there is a, a time where I would be drinking and I'd go out. And if I went out with one of uh, your nephew's uncles, Joe, uh, Jose, we both, we were told we could no longer go out, drink and hang out with each other. Cause we'd start <laughs> shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? And we're talking about like anywhere, like a straight place or we go to the gay clubs. We'll go and just like knock fools like we just it was just it wasn't a good scene it wasn't a good look and I was thinking like you know some of the people that are going to be listening to this are know of some incidents where you know I get into it and stuff with people and it's like that's that's a that was another time and I you know I've been going to therapy for the past couple years and you know just looking back at like I didn't know I was holding on to all this anger (laughs) Do you know what I'm saying? Like all this yeah. rage and like, you know, my actions were like, oh, I'm going to stand up for the, for the, for the underdog, you know? And, that, yeah, that's how I was. Right? Yeah. Like, uh, because, yeah. it, and then, you know, when you do the therapy and stuff, it's just like, oh, cause I was the underdog. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Cause like nobody was standing up for me, like back in the days, mm-hmm. I guess. And that's like that anger. So I don't want, I'm like always kind of, people know me as loud and, you know, <laughs> And I'm not shy and, and stuff like that. And it's just because, like, I'm always like, I don't like injustice. I don't like someone that is shy or quiet or doesn't have a voice. Like, I always want to be a protector or be the one that yeah, stands you know, up for them and stuff. You don't and like bullies. I don't like bullies. Exactly. I don't like and, bullies. Exactly. But then there's, like, that element, element to it. But then there's also, like, just, like, I don't know, a certain mix of certain things. And just, like, this rage would come up. So... You're saying like that was similar for you. Where do you think that that I don't give a fuckness that I that rage and and all that stuff with the combo of the drinking it would it would come out a little bit more? Where do you think that stems from for you? Um, I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't really call it a rage. I'd say I agree with that. I don't give a fuckness, but I wouldn't <laughs> say as a rage. I would maybe call it. I'm just passionate. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm going to do something, I'm going I'm to go all in. So it's not it's not really a rage. It's just, I'm, you know, if I'm doing it, I'm doing the most. 
You know what I mean? So if, if you know, something makes me mad, I'm going to be real mad. If something makes me so sad, I'm going to be real sad. So it's not rage. It's just... Uh, like I'm the just extreme scared. and passion of whatever, e- either you, way to whatever direction. It's a right. passion. You go full blown. Because, you know, I, your nephew, especially when he was little, we were like, this motherfucker, he was a baby. We're like, this motherfucker is strong as fuck. And we're like, I was like, ah, I get it. He's, he has the Korean Han. Do you know what the Korean Han is that you have no. as well? So, uh, so like, so if you fire, look at, like it's like this from womb, you mm-hmm. go, like from womb, Koreans, especially because you know how they say generational trauma, it, it's, uh, it's epigenics, it's in your DNA, right? Passed down mm-hmm. from your ancestors down to you. And if you look at, if you look up Korean Han, it's because, you know, Koreans, how, how they got fucked over, during all of world history by the Japanese, by the Chinese, da, 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 like they always got fucked with. It's this generational like rage that's like there from birth, right? And and then he's and then he's Mexican, so he has Mexican rage. You know, mm-hmm. and Mexicans we got that rage, and it comes out oh, when yeah. we've been wronged. So I was like, oh shit! Of course he has Korean Han, <laughs> and he has <laughs> the Mexican rage. So like I feel like you guys all have that Korean Korean Han. Like it's just like this. You don't like bullies. You don't like you've just always this. This kind of like chip on, you're born with like a chip on your shoulder. Like, yo, I got to prove, show and prove. I have to, you know. I want to say, like, I got in more, I, I would get in more stuff and more things uh, for other people than, than, even, than for myself. Like, I'd be quick to, you know, to, to jump into something for somebody else quicker mm. than, than I would for myself. At least, you know, at least sober. At least like, sober, but but sober. Oh, but drinking and was okey dog time. Drinking was okey dog time, <laughs> but also I just it, it was it was the same way. It was just took less. <laughs> got it, got it. You know what I mean? It, yeah, it was yeah. just a more of a a, a, a hairpin trigger, um, but it was still generally for the most part for other people. Like you know, if, if I'm with somebody and somebody was you know being some kind of way with them, yeah, you know that's. You know, then, then I'm not gonna wait for a bat signal or nothing like that. I'm just, you know, we're just gonna go in. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think that's it, it was more for other people than it was for myself. It was just, you know, I didn't mind at all. How do you think that looking back at 13, 14 year old <laughs> Bib, you know, Okie Dog Timers, the beginning of Okie Dog Timers, and now? How do you think you've changed? Uh, now I look back and even though that guy, you know, people like thought a lot of things I did was cool back then and all that. I don't I wouldn't want to be that dude right now today. Mm. Like um, it's the same way that I would hope that a lot of rappers that promote negativity, mm-hmm. like I kind of feel like they should not be looking back telling their story and promoting all the things that they did they should be looking back and you know kind of feel ashamed or or talk about why they shouldn't do that or you know talk people out of that life not glamorize it yeah. you know what i mean so and yeah. that's kind of how i feel like yeah it was cool it was it was cool to to at have a story and stuff at the time <laughs> yeah. but looking back on it i was you know a lot of that stuff was foolish a lot of that stuff, I mean, i'm so blessed and lucky that you know a lot of that stuff didn't catch up with me or didn't go different ways really easily. It could have yeah. went, you know, it could have went a lot of different ways. So, you know, going, looking back on it, I, I wouldn't want to be that person. You know, it doesn't matter the, the stories or things like that. I wouldn't want to be that person today. So you know, you, I'd rather you, be more you've positive. evolved, you've evolved. Exactly. Cause some, and some people don't more. do that. They're stuck in whatever. And for whatever reason they don't evolve. And that's what we all have to do till the day we die. Exactly. Like there's, there's qualities of that that's always going to be with me i'm always going to be yeah. a go-getter i'm always going to be yeah. you know passionate but as far as the follies as far as like the, the you know the negative stuff or things that could have been handled different or the you know hustling instead of hard working and you know it's a whole bunch of other things that went with that character that i wouldn't you know that i'm not proud of it was cool it was fun but you know at the end of the day it took me you know 12 years in prison prison reflecting on on that 
You know what I mean? And I don't even feel like that's what got me in prison. But I still had 12 years to sit down and think about who I was, you know, yeah. before I went to prison. So That makes sense. So let's talk about what, how you're reconnecting with Jalen right now. Like, what's, I, yeah, let's talk about the, how it was to see her and how this new project uh, started. All right. Um, so I guess I could start from going, being able to go to the program. So I went from the firehouse. Um, basically, I worked my way down each yard on the level yards, um, ended up at the firehouse. From the firehouse, ended up able to go to an MCRP, which where you could spend your last, the last year of your time um, at a program that's actually on the street. So you're still incarcerated, and but you're spending your time on the streets where you can get a job and you do all that. So I went to the program uh, two weeks after, no, two days, two days after I got the program. I got there on March 17th. On March 19th, uh, everything got shut down because of COVID, yeah. you know. So we at the program, we're allowed to, we were allowed to have, our, have cell phones. So finally, we were able to have a legit cell phone um so i was able to actually reach out and talk to my daughter um and talk to you know you and all the family and everybody i remember but, you were like uh this feels weird like it feels like i'm not supposed to be able to do this <laughs> <laughs> oh, <the> whole, <laughs> whole, we're facetiming you remember <laughs> you're just like uh <laughs> yeah knock on the door i'm hiding it i <laughs> I just forget, doesn't matter how much they told me that no, you can have them. So I, I hear a footstep, I'm, I'm hiding. <laughs> it was crazy. It was uh, like the whole, I think the whole time I was there, I'd never had my ringer on or anything. And they didn't have it on vibrate, had it totally on silent, didn't want to take any chances. It, it took so much adjusting to be like, oh, wait, oh, we, can have, we can have these. <laughs> but um, so I had access to a to a phone now. I, I could actually call her and talk, you know, talk longer than 15 minutes um, and talk on a regular basis, you know. So um, I realized I didn't have that much to say real quick. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Like I got 15 minutes worth of conversation um, for I got, you know, I got so used to over the time having to be quick and touch the surface. How are you? How's the family? How's everything? How's your grandmother? How's your grandfather? How's school? You know, yeah. okay, that's cool. All right. Do you need anything? And run through the whole gambit in 15 minutes that I felt like that's what I was doing, you know, when mm. we would talk. And then, um, I'll get off the phone. Like, oh, I didn't have, I didn't know what else to say. And you know, and I told my wife that, um, and then I would tell, I would tell, uh, my sister, Princess Yamara Taylor, shout out Yamara Taylor, <laughs> <laughs> go watch the new Saved by the Bill. Um, future guest of the podcast. Yeah. Future guest <laughs> here. Um, but she would always be like, did you talk to Jalen? You know, did you talk to Jalen? Oh, that's cool. You know, what'd you guys talk about? And I really, yeah, I talked to her, but I might have, it, it got to a point where I'd be like, oh, yeah, I talked to her the other day or I talked to her, you know, and she'd be like, what? You didn't talk to her? Today? Like, I want to, but I don't know what to say. And I don't want her to feel like like I don't want it to be awkward, yeah. like, you know, for her. And then it felt awkward to me because I didn't really know what to say. So I had to so I started thinking like, OK, we need something. I need to come up with something. Just like you said, we figure out a way. Yeah. So I feel like, OK, I need to figure out something that'll give us a reason or make us have to talk. Like, okay, I always get all these ideas. I got to come up with an idea I could do with my daughter, you know? And so I would brainstorm. I would I would uh, keep Rock on the phone, hour, <laughs> two hours. Rock, what, do you, what about this idea? What about this idea? You know, because he always gives like the best advice. He does. He's, so Rock, what about this idea? What about this idea? And I remember I mentioned the... Uh, I was like, well, what do you think about, uh, you know, you know, children? He was like, damn, that's a great idea. No, I said I started off with a children's character. Like, I want to, you know, it'd be cool to build a children's character and, or something. I don't know if he said it or I said it, but then I think he had mentioned, like, no, I think he said the children's character, and then I was like, oh, okay, yeah. And, and then that made me think, like, I could do a book to build up the character, you know, because he was telling yeah. me that. 
so, you know, so I'm like, okay, well, I could, so that made me think, like, I could do a book, and he was like, yeah, that's, you know, you could definitely do a book, da, 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 da. so, um, we talked about that for a while, and then I got off the phone, and um, I called my daughter, and it was like, hey, you want to do it, you know, because I already ran a couple other ideas by, I ran, you know, like, just on some, just ideas, not thinking, like, oh, we, we could do this together, Yeah. but just, I always get ideas, so I was using that as a reason to talk to her, like, hey, I had an idea, what about this, so this, and I was like, hey, you know, want to write a children's book with me, like, you know, and she was like, yeah, sure. And I think it just she she agreed because she was just, I think, happy to have me back and she was wanted to be supportive however she could. So she yeah. probably thought like, OK, I'm just going to I'll do it to support my dad. He wants to write a children's book. Fine. We'll write a book. You know, yeah. I could have said I could have said, let's build cars from scratch. She would have said, OK, sure, I'll help whatever <laughs> I could do it, you know. And then so we started brainstorming like, OK, what could it be about? So then we came up with I mentioned uh, what about the pandemic? And, she, and then from that point on, something clicked. She was like, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, that's good. So then we started brainstorming more like, okay, we can help children, you know, learn about the pandemic. And we broke down like the three most important rules. And I think once she's seen that we could probably, that we could, you know, really make a difference and do something that was actually, you know, that would contribute to society and be fun and for kids, then she like really jumped in. And then once she really jumped in, I was all in, um, it made us communicate. It gave us that communication I was looking mm. for, because even if I had to call, you know, we had to talk. We was writing the books. We was trying to uh, really hurry up and get them out. So we would talk 20 times a day. Nice. You know what I mean? So in those in those conversations, we're talking about, OK, so what else is going on? Oh, Dad, I got to I got to uh, call you back because I got to do my podcast. You know, shout out Jalen Taylor. That's uh, right. <laughs> uh, I'll put a link to her podcast, too. OK, cool. <laughs> Uh, cheers and tears. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, she'd have to tell me, she, you know, oh, I got to call you back. Cause, okay. So that's one more thing. So what's going on with that? Okay. So, oh, dad, I got to do the schoolwork. Okay. So how's your class going? Yeah. So it organically put in, more involved me in her life and it was, yeah. and it was great. And then every time we got the phone, it was a, okay, I love you. Talk to you later. Okay. I love you. Bye daddy. So, it was, you know what I mean? So yeah. it basically organically like put us back in each other's lives and force us to force that communication without it being conscious. You yeah. Know? And, and it, it, and we haven't turned back. So, it's and you guys, great. you guys, uh, turned around, turned it around quick. So how, how long was it before? Cause you got in, when did it start? And cause you were cranking shit out. Like you guys have the books. Yeah. Once, yeah we were, we went, it was, we was going like, so we started I think working on the books, I want to say, so I got there in March. Staying competitive in these dynamic times means having the right technology at work for your small or medium-sized business. Whether your goal is to grow, downsize, or modernize, Panoply BPO provides the right combination of tools, support, and affordability necessary to make it a reality. Visit panoplybpo.com. That's P A N O P L Y B P O.com to schedule your no obligation consultation today. Mention WTYM and get your 13th month of service for free. Panoplybpo.com. There is a better way. Came up with the idea. I got the tour, I think the beginning of April. And we had the first book out in August. And we had the second book out. And that was the first book was uh, from the Pixie Poochie and the Puppy Demic series was Pixie Finds a Mask. Because mm-hmm. I think that was what was that was the biggest thing going on right there. So we yeah. felt like excuse me, we need to get this one out first because right now everybody's being forced to wear the mask. It was all the debate. You had the no maskers or whatever they're calling themselves yeah. and you had the maskers. And um, so we were thinking like kids got to be scared right now. Like you know I mean, kids got to, they, if animals, you know, they bark when they see you in masks. So imagine kids don't get to recognize people's face or see yeah. them smile and they're meeting somebody or seeing them. They don't get to see the smile to, to sense that the positive energy and the smile, then they got to be spooked. 
So um, we thought it was we thought we had to hurry up and get that one out. So we got that one out and then the stories were just flowing. So after that one, two a uh, month and a half later, um, in sept- still in September, we got the second one out. And, and what's the second one called? The second one is Pixie Learns to Wash Her Paws. Mm-hmm. And then what's the third one called? Third one is Pixie Practices Social Distancing. And how many languages is it available in? It's in two. It's in English and Spanish. <laughs> www.pixiepucci.com. That's like, right. We'll have the links to <laughs> that. And when we talked about earlier, you being on, uh, did we talk? I, well, I don't know if we talked about you being on the news. Oh, yeah. You've been on the news because Supernatural Bear saw you on the news. We'll have a link to that. You've been on the news twice now. Twice. Yeah. W- with your story of reconnecting. They call it like reconnecting mm-hmm. with their daughter and then just pushing this book. I mean, you guys that did that shit and... <laughs> <laughs> a couple of months like you know what i'm saying yeah. full-blown books books it, it, it was amazing the process and and how we were able to uh put it all together and you know the family all supported however whichever way they could you supported <laughs> of course designs, it, it, it's crosses. family it's family it's family but yeah um, and then you know some the some some schools might be picking it up and it might be readily available in other places and what else? Yeah. Um, we're, we're, we're in talks with LAUSD right now. We're trying to get, uh, we're registered as a vendor for them. We're trying to get it in the LAUSD schools. Um, That's what I'm talking we're about. waiting to hear back from Los Angeles public library, uh, to get it on the, to, so it's on the buy list for the, for all the, uh, LA County libraries. Um, and, um, yeah, we're, we're trying to get it in child cares. We have it in a couple of schools already as a pilot program. We have in a couple of child cares. If you know anybody that, you know, has a child care or uh, that teaches or anything like that that wants to add the curriculum, we have a little a curriculum that we put together for it. Um, it's accessible online for uh, people that are, that are teaching, you know, over the Internet and um, could do screen share, so we have we have an online platform or web portal. Nice. Uh, yeah, we're just putting it all together. I'll oh, mention in the news. It was, it's funny because the first time that we were on the news uh, was in August, and I got in trouble at the program where I was at <laughs> for being on the news. It was it was great. It was great. But it was it was just a reminder that. Um, about you know the things that need to be changed with the system. Yeah. You know it's it's it would be different if I got on the nose for something negative or anything like that, or if I broke a rule. Yeah. But it's one of those things you can't argue with them, or you get or you really get in trouble. Yeah. You know. Um, so, but they commended me, and then they were like, "Oh, with a heavy heart, we still got to you know issue <sighs> some kind of discipline." But yeah. It was, but it, was, it doesn't matter because you're out now. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't take it back. I wouldn't take it back. <laughs> oh, let's let's do this. Yes, because hey. you're out. So I'm gonna have Shout all the links. To the CDSLA. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I I'll to have links that. to all like, that shit. Out. And um, so buy the books. Like like he said, it's in English and Espanol. Um, and if you have any programs that you guys want this to be a part of, I'll have all the information for him um, so that you can hit them up and get all into that. So I know I said I only need you for an hour. Do you have time for these questions before sure. you leave? All sure, right. Sure. Questions from the audience first, and then we'll get into the other questions. Questions from the audience. You're going to know immediately who's this from, who's this from because of the question. Who is your favorite little sister that you've lived with? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that's, that, I'm going to have to say Yamara Taylor Princess, <laughs> a.k.a. Pooter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another, another Shout question. Shout out, Princess. <laughs> Shout, Shout out, out to Yam the God at Yam the God <laughs> or IG. Um, which the 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 serious question out of the, her questions is: What do you think your biggest takeaway from the last 12, 12 years was? Um, be myself. You know, because that's I mean that's what got me 
through everything, you know what I mean? It's just being myself, you know, and it's, it's, you know, so many people try and pull you in different directions and, you know, things like that, but you just got to stay true to yourself and just be yourself. Okay. Next question is from your older sister. Trudy. Hey, don't tell me who they're from, I guess. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Go ahead. What was it? How was it? Sorry. How was it driving through LA when you returned and what do you miss or not miss about the city? Um, it was crazy. I feel like I still feel like a tourist out okay. here. So driving through the city was kind of like if I was almost driving through, like even Okie Dog was gone. It, it was moved. Yeah. So I had to go, I went to the new location for it. You know what I mean? So basically they got islands in the middle of Pico right now. <laughs> um, there's the regentrified, you know, <laughs> South Central, like, you know, right? so go to Crenshaw and Stocker, the liquor bank is gone. Crazy. Uh, um, so just driving through LA was not like driving through LA for me. It was, I, I just, everything was different. So that tourist vibe, I, f- I felt like a tourist. I still, as a lot of things, I still feel like a tourist. Um, and then I'm going to places that I haven't been to and things are weird. The bank was weird. <laughs> um, yogurt land is weird. Let me see. What else? <laughs> I don't have some weird experiences like that's probably normal. But for me, it was it was just weird. Like you know, the, the the whole chip thing is weird. You know, like cars <laughs> oh shit! Now. Yeah, huh? Yeah. yeah. When I went in, that was just like a logo. That was just like, oh look, it's like a picture. It was just like a picture. You didn't know one used the chip. Yeah. You know, I went in the, the bank the other day, and I was armed with my and my my pin number. I had my new. I was like, okay, because last time they got me, like I don't remember my pin number <laughs> twelve years ago. You know what I mean? So I had the card. I was ready to swipe it. You know, and it was yeah. like, yeah, use the chip. I said the strip. Okay, <laughs> you know I mean that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. I'm using the strip. He's like, no, the chip. I said the strip, dude. Like, you know, I got my pin. I, you know, I got my pin number. I wanted to tell him, like, dude, I just got out of prison. I, you know, I felt self conscious. It made me feel self conscious. Yeah. It took me from feeling ten feet tall to feeling like two feet tall. Just something simple like that. Yeah, like, dude, what are you talking about? You know, and then I guess wifey seen me like looking confused, so she came over like, no, you got to do this, baby. <laughs> Well, I talked to other people and they were like, dude, I had the same problem, but I wasn't even in prison. It was just they changed over. No, to that's a new real. System. That's real. So, that happened to me in the so, beginning. I'm like, what? The chip? Oh, I stick this in? Like, you know what I mean? It's a, It was a transition too. So that's yeah. crazy. Um, I got a couple more questions, and these are from your big brother, Raka. Shout out, Raka. <laughs> Diana people love you, bro. <laughs> What book that you read made the biggest impact on you or change in you while you were there? Um, that's a good question. I've read like a thousand books while I was in there. I read, but I'm going to say, and this one, I don't know if a lot of people heard of it. It's called The Four Hour Work Week. Yeah. And it's by Tim Ferriss. Yep. And I'm going to say that one because it, um, it, it supported that I wasn't, it, it told me I wasn't crazy. Like, because I always <laughs> felt that and I always expressed that. And like the same things that he taught, like you, there's a smarter way. If you do things a certain kind of way, you don't have to work as hard. It's all about working smart and you don't, you know what I mean? And you could basically choose and form your life around the way you want it. And there's ways to do it. You don't have to follow, basically you don't have to follow the mode just because everybody else is running a rat race. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to do it. There's a way to, to live the way you want to live. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that one, because it just basically told me I wasn't crazy for thinking the way I've always thought um, in those regards, as far as business and, and jobs and all that stuff. And then I also like, um, I read it before, um, but Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I just mm. I read it like probably about 30 times, you know, so I like yeah. that one. Um, I think, uh, let me see. I think that might be it. I like the, um, the Alchemist. Yeah, it's uh, classic. Um, everyone should, yeah, no matter where the, you're from, yeah. no matter where you're at, you everyone should read that and then reread it later. I was just thinking right. about that book the other day, too, because there's Rock a lot of people that, that I follow. Time. They're like, you know, reread it. It's time to reread right. it, you know, because right. you forget and you have to reread it to, to absorb it again. Or like, you know, maybe it's dormant in your brain. And you have to, like, get those principles out again and stuff. 
Um, Mm -hmm. You know, podcasts have have been a really crazy, great savior for me pre-pandemic, during the pandemic. And I love Tim Ferriss, and he has a podcast called The Tim Ferriss Show. Mm -hmm. I think you'll really like that. I'll I'll definitely check it out. Yeah. Definitely tune in. And uh, he also has a, he also has a book that's really cool too called the Four Hour Body. He also has another book, and I I, I could have sworn I sent it to you, but maybe I did it. The uh, Tribe of Mentors. Uh uh-uh. uh. I'm gonna get to that book. So okay, it's him. Awesome. So that book is crazy good because it's him, and he reached out to the best people in all walks of life and asked them eleven, I think ten or eleven questions, and he specifically has these questions in a specific order so that it gets certain types of answers out of everybody, right? Mm -hmm. And so he asked, like, the CEO of this or one of the best, you know, this, from all walks of life. And it's just hella thick. And it's just, I I, I need a bite. I actually, uh, I think I checked it out maybe. And so I was just looking. I was just, like, absorbing. I was like, this is amazing. And then he also has at the end some really good no's. That he mm-hmm. got when because he emailed mm-hmm. all these people because he knows all the people because of his books and and his podcast and he's like I, he's like I thought it was really important to to add the nose because you have to know first a lot of the successful people you got to get nose you got to you got they have get to learn nose. how to say no right because you got to learn how to spend your energy you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying you can't just give it all out and you have to be like you know like work smarter not harder. So he's like the the nose. I got some real impressive nose, you know. And so he has those in there, but it's like hella thick. So I'll get to that book. Um, awesome. Okay, what do de- let's see? What degree or degrees did you earn while you were away? Um, official degrees. I earned three uh, associate's degrees in college. I nice. earned my bachelor's degree, and I earned uh, paralegal and advanced paralegal certificates. Please believe. Yes. I wasn't in there wasting time. Exactly. Um, you were doing the time. You weren't letting the time do you. That part. <laughs> the last question from uh, your big brother is, most of the country is doing distance education these days. Some people taking it better than others. Do you find that being away made it easier or harder to focus on finishing your degree programs? Um, I think it made it easier. I think it made it easier for me because I didn't want to waste the time. Like, you know what I mean? I didn't feel like, I felt like that was the best thing I could be doing with my time, you know? And I had, there was no distractions. I mean, there's regular, you know, everyday (laughs) distractions, but not just not fun distractions. Yeah. There weren't weren't any fun distractions to keep me from, from doing it. That was the actually, that was the fun distraction. Mm-hmm. From all the from all the nonsense, yeah, you know what I mean. That was the 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 what you look for. Okay, I'm just about to focus on this book. I don't care what's going on around me. I'm about to just get this stuff done and feel good about myself for doing this. Yeah, you know what I mean, so it was it was a lot easier, I think, by doing it in there. And, and do you think it also was kind of like a control thing because you didn't have any control over like everyone at the system what you were in was controlling you, but you had control over this. Like, I can read this book, I can do this work, and I'm going to have an outcome, and I'm in control of that. I mean, that definitely plays a part in it because you could they could be like, all right, no program, everybody in the sale, everybody on your bunks, everybody this, everybody that, and you, you can always pull out a book yeah, and do it from there. So that definitely played a part in it. I think uh, more... Than anything else, though, the inspiration was uh, when I was earning my bachelor's, mm-hmm. my daughter was running, was earning hers, too. Nice. And once I told her that I was doing that, I couldn't I felt like I couldn't stop. Even when I like it was be times I was like, you know what? Do I really need it? Like, is it, you know, won't it just be canceled out by the fact that I went to prison, that, I, you know, that I'm an inmate, things like that. Yeah. And so sometimes it would get discouraging. Like, am I doing this for nothing? But at the same time, um, it's like. Yeah, maybe it will cancel that out. Maybe I need I need something to cancel. To even cancel if it, it does, out, yeah. Yeah, so even if it does cancel it out, at least I'm at a blank slate rather than the negative in the hole. That's real, yeah. So that, but also I couldn't stop once I told my daughter I was going to get it because then it like looked like I you know, was a quitter. So I was like, okay, I told her I'm going to get it no matter what. I'm going to get it. I'm, I got to get it. You know? Yeah. So I think that was probably the biggest, that and, uh, and rock. 
you know, I mentioned it to Rocky. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. What do you need, bro? <laughs> you know, whatever you need, I'll pay for it. I got you. This is, you know what I mean? So I told him I was going to do it. And so, you know, I had to, I had to do it. Cause I was like, okay, if nothing else, man, I got to get out of here with my bachelor's degree. I earned, I earned all the other things in pursuit of the bachelor's. So I earned the three, the three, uh, associate's degrees. I earned the two paralegal certificates, um, all in pursuit of the bachelor's degree. You know what I mean? So it was just, it was, it was great. Amazing, man. Amazing. Okay, before we leave, let's do these not so rapid fire questions, aka the slow as hell questions. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? Estás listo? Mm hmm. First one three words to describe yourself. Mm. Optimistic, um, loyal, and um, trustworthy. And you know what? Optimistic for sure. I met you before you went in. You're always optimistic. Optimistic while you're in there. We go visit you. You just have this vibe, this this light. And you still have it. You know what I'm saying? So they 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 didn't win. You know what I'm saying? Because like, oh, yeah. they didn't take that shit away from you. So yeah, optimistic for sure. All those other things for sure, but that optimistic, it's that light. You got a light, babe. A light. Um, the next Thank question. You. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, I think I said it earlier, too. I think it's the same one. Just do you. Just be yourself. That's real. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, you're, you you got to be accountable to yourself when you look back at things and, you know, say, did I, did I do what I wanted to do? Did I become the person that I wanted to become? Because, you know, if you, as long as you did that, then you're going to be satisfied at the end of the day. That's real. The next one. What are you doing to dismantle the patriarchy? What am I doing to dismantle the patriarchy? Great question. That's what they <laughs> always say when they get a hard question. Great question. I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to say support uh, matriarchy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I support matriarchy. Um, yeah, and anything else that I'm directed to do by matriarchs. <laughs> love well, it. I, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, next one. Song that you listen to to get you hyped when you need it. When you're in need. What's your go-to? Um, I'm gonna be honest. I, I, uh, I like the the Okie Dog song. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, get, it gets me hyped. That's that's my that's my go-to now. Like you know what I mean? It's like damn, yeah. listen to a song about me or loosely based on me. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, like this is it's, it's an amazing feeling. Like I'm not a rapper, but I got a, a rap about me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Um, and I didn't, it wasn't something that was planned. So it's just basically, it's just, it's just hype. So that hypes me up when I listen to that. And it's just, it's, it just goes. They're like, a lot of the song just goes. Shout out Mercy Kim. But, um, have you talked to him since you've been out? Um, not over the phone, not on the phone, just on, uh, through, through social media and text. And oh, nice. Like that. Um, he's happy to hear you're out, I'm sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um, so we're going to probably link up real soon. It's, it's really been on me. I've just been super busy just still getting settled in. So I haven't talked to a lot of people yeah. um, other than those those uh, methods through social media and text just because. So if I haven't if anybody seen this and I haven't called you yet or or linked up with you, pulled up on you, then I'm still I'm still in the process of getting settled in. Yeah. I'm still, you know, I had a whole bunch of, you know, I just I just got a whip. I just, you know what I mean? So I saw um, nice. Thank you, thank you. Congrats. Uh, so I'm just, I'm just, I'm just getting everything. I'm just getting everything going. You know what I mean. Yeah. So as soon as I get settled and fully acclimated, then then I'm pulling up and I'm, I'm reaching out and all that. Nice. So. Yeah. Last question: What will be your legacy? Um, I will have a, a couple of them. You know, it's going to be a legacy of like reunification like you know re- reconnecting mm-hmm. and um you know 
showing basically by example, like how people yeah. could, re, you know, how you can reconnect with your family, especially like your kid or kids, um, no matter what transpired before that, you, you know, there's always a chance to make it right. Um, and, you know, maybe the the a positive look on on uh, people utilizing their second chances, you know, what I mean, right. like not just, you know, take making the most out of a second chance. Now that you know when it's presented to you, but I also want to help uh, inmates, former inmates, um, and for me especially, I want to help the youth be- so they don't become inmates. Please believe it. So they're not so, part of that a school to pipeline system. Right, prevention. I, I want to prevention. Focus on, um, um, I'll I'll speak into to uh, uh, a gentleman by the name of Tavikus um, Dawson, and he wrote. The, he's the author of the Hurt Help book. Okay. And he focuses on prevention. Uh, shout out to Abacus. He focuses on um, prevention, um, reentry, and um, a few other things. He does basically everything to help to you know along the to help the cause. And uh, so I kind of wanna following those footsteps, yeah, you know, and do something real positive and just kind of help. And well, my focus one is, is going to be mainly prevention. Nice. You know, because I, I feel like a lot of people are in there because they didn't know the laws and to the, the extent that the laws could be pushed. It's it's not about, like me, I didn't gang bang. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, didn't, I wasn't out robbing people. Yeah. Um, I wasn't out, you know, just doing heinous acts of violence for no reason or, you know, anything like that. Yeah, you know, Moors. I didn't know to what extent that they could they could use their laws as a weapon and how they could you know give me with their laws. Um, so had I known the laws, then I think my situation would have been way different. You know, so I yeah, wanna, I'll basically focus on prevention by teaching the laws. Yeah, and also implementing. I think it's important to implement other types of programs that offset a lot of reasons why we're e- black and brown, you know, BIPOC people are even put in these positions um, mm-hmm. to, to, to enter. And, you know, if you, those that are listening, if you want to listen to episode 12, I have Rebecca Cervantes. Um, she's a health and equity advocate. And she talks about that. You know, we talked about the the school to prison pipeline and, you know, all the different, it's a, it's, it's public health. It's a public health situation. Mm -hmm. However you look at it, you know, like you would need to have the resources and the programs out there in the communities, um, to, like you said, for prevention, to prevent even entering the system in any way, you know, because you go to the foster system, they're like, Oh, let's put them up in there, you know? Oh, mm -hmm. easy. That's easy. That's an easy, uh, you know, entry to the prison system. You know what I'm saying? Like all these different things. And I saw recently someone posted, they're like, you're going to take away the kid from the mom and put and pay the foster parent 38,000 a year for that kid. Why not pay the mom? <laughs> like, you know, give that money right. back to the mom or the, or the parent. I mean, whoever the, 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 the guardian is to, so to, don't. to get them stabilized. So the kid doesn't have to be destroyed in the process. Yeah. Because it's a, we all know it's a fucked up process. It's a, like you hear like, Oh, they just take them out of this bad situation and put them in foster care so they can get more fucked up. Like I've heard, I've known people, I've heard stories Oh, the, the the prison is full of people that were foster kids. Like, yeah, they their situations just become more fucked up. They because it's basically a paycheck. There's no love, you know. Yeah, it's, it's basically a paycheck for the foster parents. Not all foster parents, but you know, the majority yeah. of them. It's, it's for a the paycheck. majority of them, it's and, a paycheck. And they'll grab as many kids as they can to increase the amount of that paycheck. You know, and I've run into so many foster kids in the system that are just, you know, fucked up. Like they're yeah. just. Because they didn't have any type of stability. And that's what, you know, there's um, there's also another book that I just finished uh, listening to, actually. It's called uh, The Body Keeps the Score. And just of mm-hmm. how different traumas affect, um, through science, they know how it affects your, your mm-hmm. mentals and your physical, you know what I'm saying? Like, and stuff like that. And there's a lot of people, because as a kid, if you had 
uh, traumatic shit uh, happened to you as a kid, you didn't have the stability, you're always like on edge or, you know, it could go one way where you're always the the aggressor or always like, you know, uh, you know, the loud person or you're always the victim because you were a victim as a kid or as a mm-hmm. young adult and you don't have any other, um, you don't have any other uh, tools to, to realize that you're putting yourself in a fucked up situation. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it could go either way. So yeah, man, uh, crazy. Well, Bib, thank you so much. I love you. I'm so happy that you're out. I'm like, I'm glad that I got to social distancely, uh, safely see you. For sure. And that the supernatural bear, he loves you so much. Uh, love you too, man. <laughs> and that he, he got to see, you know, that we all got to see you for a hot second. It was it was a glorious day, man. It was fucking one for the books, you know, one that I knew was going to happen, but we were all surprised because it happened quicker than we for thought. Sure. So it was a for pleasant sure. surprise. And at the same time, we're like, what? He's in L.A.? Oh, it's a pandemic and we can't go see him. <laughs> like, like now he's yeah. hella close instead of hours away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, no, that that's that's amazing. And um, I, I, I have a feeling because of all the shit you've done and sh- b- before you even got out fully, you know, with with Jalen, shout out to, to Jalen, your daughter, my my niece. Um, you know, I feel like you're. If you continue on this path, fucking the space is the limit for you, babe. For sure. Shout out <laughs> Jalen, co-author, co-creator, <laughs> everything. Love you, girl. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, thank you for having me on and being such a great hermana. <laughs> no problem, hermano. <laughs> love you. <laughs> All right. I love you, too. Your industry is loud and congested. How will you cut through the noise while maintaining brand integrity? Regardless of how talented and creative your core team is, nearly all businesses need some level of support in order to communicate their message. From brand identity and graphic design to experiential and digital, let the team at Ritzy Periwinkle help you speak your mind and translate rough thoughts into captivating action. Visit ritzyperrywinkle.com today to schedule a no-cost 30-minute consultation to discuss the best creative strategies for your business. That's R-I-T-Z-Y-P-E-R-W-I-N-K-L-E.com. Ritzy Periwinkle, let's build. And now, introducing... Supernatural Bear Corner. Supernatural Bear. Yo, yo, yo. What am I all bots and Decepticons? It's me, SMB16. And today, unlike most days where I just like uh, say a few words or make an acapella or something like that, today I'm doing an actual interview with my uncle and... Um, co-author of the Pixie Poochie series. Also, I'm not sure if co-author even is a word, but <laughs> co-author of the Pixie Poochie series, my Uncle Big J. Give him a hand. Hey, glad to be here. Glad to be here. I'm so glad I get to actually interview someone for a change. <laughs> like, I always love to interview people. It's my passion. My passion is interviewing people. So uh, today we have three questions. All right. Two of them from one of them from me. Two, another one from a fan, and then the other one from a fan. All right. Awesome. So, I love my fans. Also get uh, and you, of course. Get anymore. also get my Thea ready for. The the giant icebreaker question. Oh, okay. Get your Tia ready for the giant icebreaker question. Yeah, I'm not going to reveal what her name is. Like, Uncle Big... I'm just going to give you a clue. Uncle Big J's name, it's not actually Big J, but 
I just grew up calling him that. So even I don't know his real name. So I'm just um, winging it with Uncle Big J and hoping that um, no one tracks him down. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. So All right. yeah, yeah. Let's ask. Do some ask question away. asking. Let's do let's this. Let's do it. Let's do it. So for real, let's get into the questions. Okay. All right. Number for real, for one. Real, let's do this. Yes, sir. What is your favorite Transformers toy and just overall character? Like, I have Megatron right here. He's not my favorite. Um, I would say my favorite is Shockwave or Soundwave. Mm-hmm. Out of all of the Transformers that I know of, I love Shockwave because he's just, oh, my God, so cool. And Soundwave because, again, one of my uncles knows Soundwave. And I just grew up loving Soundwave. So, what is your favorite Transformer toy for first? See, if you'd have asked me a little while ago, I probably would have said Optimus Prime. Mm. Just because, however, you hit me to something the other day that I did not know. And that was the Shockwave in one of the uh, series. Hearts of Steel. Yeah, Hearts of Steel, Shockwave Hearts of Steel. That's the dude right there. It turns into the big uh, ship, the big military-style vessel. Ah. Never so seen that before, so that changed my uh, whole whole opinion. That's my new favorite, Shockwave uh, Hearts of Steel. Let's do this. Mm, yeah, I would choose any Shockwave, but specifically Shout Hearts of Steel, wave. too, because also a little secret up in here, somewhere in this closet lies in un opened siege shockwave so um next time when i get to open the shockwave i'll um show you all right when i see when i grew up it was like basically shockwave just turned into the like he turned into the jet right wasn't that that he turned i think you're talking about starscream but um shockwave actually just turned into um a a more cybertronian intergalactic oh a more Cybertronian intergalactic planetary planetary intergalactic gun. Um, well, Megatron transforms Turn into a usually into a more okay. Earth mode gun, like a, for specifically in G one a Walter P thirty eight. Um, <laughs> but Shockwave in the original cartoon series, he stayed on Cybertron. Um, but unfortunately, he had to get killed by Unicron. Sorry if this is turning a little bit dark. Um, but uh, hey, whoever's watching this, probably a grown. I mean, listening to this, probably a grown up. So um, yeah, you, cool. you, you you're, handle it. You're grown up, so you should. You're supposed you to handle t- it. You're supposed to take the darkest of the dark. It's the real world we're talking. But um. <laughs> I would definitely want to work on the Decepticon side. Also, because, you know, I'm evil and I can do what I want. Ain't nobody uh. bossing me around. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody got time for that. Um, and what is your favorite Transformers toy? Favorite Transformers toy? If you had one. I'm going to have to say... Um, the one I used to play with more, the most was the Optimus Prime one. Wait, what? You had G1 Optimus Prime? Like is, back in the day, yeah. That was the one I used to play with. So. Is he somehow up for grabs? No, he's gone. It's a long time ago. Long, long time ago. I moved about 30 times since then. It's over. Man. How I'd, I would pay $1,000 for just a vintage Optimus Prime somewhere. Like a vintage, not like one of those vintage G1 mm-hmm ones like a vintage vintage back from 1984 man uh, if i could go back in time and change one thing i would save it for you oh. okay next question do you have a stuffy and if so do you sleep with it do i have a stuffy yeah does tell us his name his or her name gender and little origin. I do not have a stuffy. Oh, you do not have a stuffy? 
I don't. I'm not even sure what a stuffy is. A stuffy is uh, like a stuffed, like a stuffed animal. animal. Yeah, like a stuffed animal or a stuffed companion that you can relate to. Nope. Oh nope. I guess my stuffy would be your uh, Tia Lupi. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know so that mean? was all the questions that we had. Thank you so much, Uncle Big J. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me, little Big J. Mm. Anytime. Can't wait to get back on here and talk to you some more. All right. Yeah, Goodbye, there, everyone. There. Shooby-doo. Damn it. Um, yeah, that was a great episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it because it was a lot of fun to produce. There was a lot of editing going down for the SMB corner, but he did such a good job that my little professional little man, it was significantly longer. There was his Tia Lupita in there, but we had to cut it because of how it was, uh, the flow and just the names and stuff like that. But um, yeah, he did a great job. I didn't prep him. I mean, he learned from the best, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for listening. Keep on uh, supporting any way you can. We appreciate it so we can, you know, really focus and showcase diverse voices. And uh, yeah, let's let's make shit, hap- shit happen in the in the 2021s. We reap. Word to Your Mama is owned and produced by Ritzy Periwinkle. The intro to Word to Your Mama was produced by Nico Beats. And as always... Word to Your Mama is brought to you by RitzyPeriwinkle.com and PanoplyBPO.com. <laughs>